everyone welcome back to another video and in this one we're going to be taking a look at my newest vacuum engine and that is a boxer 2. now i've been debating whether or not i should make one of these engines because they are a bit complicated but as long as you know the structure in the end then it's really easy to build so one thing i'd like to point out before we begin is the fact that this engine was actually heavily inspired by Boxer Lego's design. These brackets along the top here and bottom were inspired from his design, but the rest of the engine is pretty much all created by me, including the manifold, which I have taken off to show you. And as you can see, it has paper gaskets in order to create a good seal because it's not directly part of the engine, it's able to be taken off so that you can actually work on the engine. Normally you have to get up or you have to get at the parts that are on the side. With this engine, it's actually not that hard. All you have to do is take off the flywheel and this front bracket here, and then you can actually take off both cylinders out of this actual housing brackets thing, which is actually really convenient and to stick it back in, it's really simple. The only thing that this bracket housing does is support these two cylinders. Now, there are many other ways that you could have done this to hold them up, and one of which is to just support them on a base plate, which is kind of what I did, but still it's um, supported down here. But yeah, so moving on to the manifold, the intake manifold, as you can see, it splits the air coming in from the vacuum right here into these two parts, which are directly connected to both cylinders via the valve. And yeah, so the paper on this creates a really good seal. And I must say they have worked really well. So I'm going to run the engine for you and hopefully you can appreciate the sound because I will mention it sounds amazing like incredible also i have a plethora of videos and i will link a playlist to all of the videos in the description if you want to check out my other experimentals with this engine and yeah let's get into it so first of all i'm going to go over the main idea of the bracket frame around it around the actual cylinders and valves because Got a lot of questions on how to actually make the support um, kind of box, I guess you could say. But anyway, um, so basically, it's two of these kind of curved pieces that are directly connected to the cylinder head of both cylinders. And so these beams right here is what goes on the cylinder head in order to connect these pieces and yeah so they basically just go across with this beam here they connect and in the center is where a center beam goes from the top to the bottom and in the center of that that's where the crankshaft goes through one thing I also would, uh, would like to point out is that this is a versatile kind of type of frame so what I'm saying is you can actually disconnect one of the other pegs from this bottom part and you can actually take the top beams brackets out and actually fold the cylinders up to make a v-twin and that's something i'm going to be doing in the near future my next engine is going to be a hundred percent v-twin and that is has been confirmed so yeah um like i said the brackets are directly connected to the cylinder head and they support them up. Moving on to the flywheel, I've gotten a lot of complaints saying that this bottom part is not connected to the base plate. And the reason for that is, it's a very simple um, logical conclusion. The flat surface of the Legos and the horizontal surface of the Legos don't actually line up. And this is a not measurable unit of length between this plate and this brick that is measurable in Legos, so I can't actually attach it anywhere. So I do have to end up holding it. If I secure it down, 
it doesn't spin smoothly. So that's why it just kind of sits up here. And it does vibrate, but it does, hasn't caused any major performance issues overall. But other than that, it has performance pistons and performance valves, lightweight stuff. However, it does not have the one by one hole upgrade that I had on my one cylinder because I'm gonna be honest, it is a very, very highly revving engine and I don't wanna blow it up. So yeah, it runs really fast anyway and it produces a lot, lot, lot of low end torque. I can't even stop it with my hand. So without any further ado, after all the explaining that I've done, I think it's time that we run the engine. As you can see, it's very hard to stop with just my hand because it has that much torque. So, as you can see, it's a very, very smooth running engine. So, yeah, um, now that you've known the basics of the Boxer engine, I think we can all agree that the video has come to an end. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, only a small percentage of viewers that actually watch my channel are subscribed. So if you have the time, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button as it helps me out a lot. And as always, thanks for watching.